Hey guys, hope you're well. In this lesson, we're gonna learn how to divide fractions. So let's immediately start. 25 over 30 divide 10 over 24. All that you do when you have fractions that are being divided is when you see a divide sign, I want you to think of K, C, F. It's almost like KFC, like the food we eat, but it's n you just switch the F and the C around. So it's KCF, not KFC, it's KCF. What it means is keep, change, flip. This works when you have divide. So what do we mean? Keep means keep the first one the same. Don't change that one. Then the second one says change. What that means is change the sign. Okay, so we're gonna change the sign to a multiply and then flip. That means flip this one upside down like that. That is step number one. Now, in the previous lesson, we already learned how to do multiply. Now you just do that again. Okay, so that's the only difference is you just have to quickly do the KCF and then it becomes multiply and we know how to do multiply. Let's go and um, try this one. So what we learned is that we will, for example, change this into, let's say five times five. And then this one, you could, for example, change it into six times five. And then this, you could change into six times four, for example. And you'll see why I'm doing this now. Because what we learned in the previous lesson is that numbers at the top can cancel numbers at the bottom. So for example, this six can cancel this six. This five can cancel this five. You could have also said this five and this five or this five and this five or this five and this five, it doesn't matter. As long as it's one five at the top and one five at the bottom, then we could cancel this five and this five. And so all that we have left now is a four at the top, that one, and a two at the bottom. And what is four divided by two? Two, and so there's our answer. So for the rest of this lesson, we're just gonna go practice a couple. Um, we're also gonna have some with mixed numbers and we're gonna have some that have negatives in them. So as soon as you see a divide sign, remember K, C, F. What that means, keep, so keep the first one the same, change, change the divide to a multiply, and then flip this one upside down. Then, from the previous lesson, we now know how to handle multiplying. What we do is we try to change these numbers into smaller, we break them down. So for example, if I look at this 12, I'm gonna change that to four, times three. You could have said six times two as well, but you'll see why I think four times three will work better. But as I say, if you did say six times two, you will still get the same answer. And then the number 20, I'll change that to 10 multiplied by two. You could have said five more, actually five multiplied by four would be better. You'll see why now. And then this one I'm gonna change to four multiply by two. You see, now this four can cancel with this four. That's why I chose, that's why I chose four times three over here. Because if I changed it to six times two, then there's no other six that can cancel it. Okay, so as you practice this, you'll get better. Okay, so what happens now is that this five and this five could cancel, this four and this four, or you could have actually used this four and this four, it doesn't matter. So what we now have left over is a three at the top, there's nothing over there, so they just put a one. And then over here we have a four at the top and a two at the bottom. Now these numbers are nice and small, so as we learned about in our previous lesson, when the numbers become nice and small, you can just multiply the top and the top together and then the bottom and the bottom together. And what is 12 divided by two? Six. So with this example, as we can see, we have a divide sign. So remember when you have a fraction or when you're dividing fractions, then we like to use KCF, keep, change, flip. So we keep the first one the same. We change the sign from a divide to a multiply. And then we flip this fraction upside down. Okay, 
Now, this is where we like to break the numbers up. So for example, I'm gonna change this into, you could say 10 times two, but I, I'm, I'm gonna say five times four. Um, you'll see why now. And then here I'm gonna say eight times four. And then for this one, I'm gonna say six times four. And then for this one, I'm gonna say five times three. You could have used other combinations, but I think that'll work nicely. The reason is, is that what we've learned in the previous lesson is that when we are multiplying fractions, any number at the top can cancel with any number at the bottom. So any number over here can cancel with any number over here. So for example, we could cancel this five and this five. And then for example, this four and this four. And then, okay, so let's quickly go and write down what we have now. So I'm gonna write it over here. So we now have, there's nothing over there. So whenever there's nothing, put a one. What do we have here? We have an eight. What do we have here? We still have six times four. And then over here, we still have three. Okay, so now we can break some numbers down a little bit further. For example, this eight, I'm gonna change that into four times two. And then I think that'll be fine. We don't need to break anything down more because now, this four can cancel that four. And so at the top, we now have one over two, and then over here we have six over three. And I think these numbers are nice and small now. So when the numbers are small enough, then you just multiply the tops and the tops and the bottoms and the bottoms. So that'll give us six at the top, and two times three is six. Six divided by six is one. So here we have mixed numbers. So remember, when you've got mixed numbers and you've got fractions, I would always say, change them to improper fractions first. So remember, the way that you do that is you're gonna say, um, okay, so first of all, these numbers are gonna go at the bottom, so you're gonna put that at the bottom. Now you're gonna say one times six, which is six, plus five is 11. Then you're gonna say divide, then you're gonna put a four at the bottom because there's a four at the bottom. Then you're gonna multiply, two times four is eight, eight plus three is 11. Now, here we have a divide, so what do we use? K, C, F, which stands for keep, so keep the first one the same, change the sign, and then flip this upside down. All right, now we've learned that when you are multiplying fractions, you can always cancel numbers at the top with numbers at the bottom, so I'm gonna immediately cancel those two. And so what we now have is, if there's nothing there, just put a one, and then at the bottom we have a six, and then a four, and then at the bottom we have a one. Now, these numbers are very small, so I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna break them down, I'm just gonna say top times top, and bottom times bottom, so that's gonna be four over six. Now, can the answer be simplified? Yes. I know that the number two can go into both of these. Let me show you this in a nice way. I know that four is the same as two times two, and I know that six is the same as three times two. So I know then that those two can cancel, and so the answer is two over three. All right, so here's the question where we have a negative. So don't worry about that for now. Let's first do the divide sign. So remember, K, C, F. So you keep the first fraction as it is, change the sign. Now this negative, just keep it there. So just keep it like that. And then you flip this one upside down. So 12 over 14. Now, Remember, in that one lesson back when we were looking at integers, we learned that when you have a multiply sign, you simply, this is where we used the prit glue. I don't know if you remember that lesson where we had a prit glue. Anyways, what we learned was that when you have a multiply sign, you just highlight the two things next to the multiply sign. And then this is where we learned to count the number of lines. Remember, I'm not gonna go into all the details, but pretty much what you should remember is that we counted the number of lines and so we only have one line over there. And so what we learned then was that one is an odd number and an odd number is always a negative. So this whole answer needs to be a negative. So I'm just gonna put a negative right in the front. Now I'm just gonna start breaking numbers down like we've learned to do with multiply. So for example, I'm gonna change this to seven times six. You could have said like, 21 multiplied by two. But why did I choose seven times six? Well, the reason is the following. And then this, you'll see now, and then this one I'm gonna say six times six, 
and then this I'm going to say 6 times 2, and then this I'm going to say 7 times 2. So you see, there's a 7 here and a 7 here. And we know that when you are doing mu multiplying with fractions, you can always cancel a number at the top with any number at the bottom. And so we could cancel this 7 with this 7, and for example, this 6 and this 6, or you could have said this 6 and this 6, or this 6 and this 6, it doesn't matter. As long as it's one at the top and one at the bottom. Oh, and then we can even cancel this 6 and this 6, and this 2 and this 2. So the answer is literally just going to be negative because there's a negative there. And then if there's nothing available, just say 1. So the answer is negative 1.